Chris, were you happy with the response tonight after a tough little period? Um, I thought we played well. Yeah, I thought, um, you know, we're, we're a bit similar to some games we've played in the last couple of months where we were outplayed for patches, but I think if you're more than a casual observer, you'll see that across the competition. Um, so I don't think anyone's good enough just to dominate games from go to woe, but yeah, it was, it was pleasing that um, yeah, we had some, some of our good players look like they were sort of back in some, some good form. I mean, even the, the competition's so tight, even Dangerfield coming back. Like last week was a bit of a cider after missing a fair bit of footy and he looked like himself, which was a really good sign for us. I thought he was probably um, symptomatic of sort of where we're trying to get to with some of our... Like we've got some good guys who have just been a little bit off and that's meant that... Um, I don't think... Like we had a bad one against Carl, bad one against the Gold Coast. The others were pretty tight, so... Um, I don't think we ever, I think I'd say hand on heart, ever got sucked into thinking that we were going that badly. Um, but again, you know, it's our job to look a bit, little bit deeper than just the win-loss. Um, but yeah, I'm not going to say it's not um, pleasing to, to play better and win. Did you like the look of Tom Stewart going into the centre bounces? Yeah, I, I, um, it just, the, the, I mean, the move makes sense to me. Uh, I hold him in such high regard. Uh, I haven't joked with him. Like, if we decided to play him as a small forward, he'd probably be the best small forward in the comp, in my opinion. He's just got... Um, you know, great attributes and a, a great attitude to his footy. And um, like, I don't think he's been shooting the lights out, but he's been going much better than I sense people think he's been going. How hard was it to take out you know, probably your best one-on-one -on -one defender against a and forward line that had so many targets? Oh well, the the game's never been more a situation where you. To get something, you need to, to give something. And, it, it, and that might sound obvious, but it used to be that you know, you, um, if, you're, if you're a really good team, there were, there were some weeks where you, know, you, you could experiment a little bit and not lose too much. Now, like every single team in the competition can exploit um, any weaknesses in your setup. So um, I, I would sort of make the argument that, especially without Dangerfield and, and, and Guthrie in our team, that we were, you know, Pretty quickly, we became a developing midfield, and then Tanner Brougham was an important part of that, and he went out. Um, so, I guess the other side of that argument is, yeah, we didn't have him in our back half as much, but um, if we played him back, we wouldn't have had him around the ball. We would have probably been, um, I mean, we've, we've, we've been giving up scores as well, so it's not just that midfield, but we've probably just been a little nude in the midfield compared to the other parts of the ground the last month or two. Was he playing as a like a full time mid tonight? Could it seem like? At the, he'd be there at the stoppage, and then after that, he'd sort of push back, maybe 20 metres away from uh, behind the ball. Um, how do I answer this without answering it? <laughs> like, but and I get it. Like I'm, I'm um, the way I think about like Tom's games, we we, we want to sort of maximise. Um, his attributes, but that's the way I think about the game anyway. I'm not a believer that there's a right way to play the game and you've got to sort of force your players into that mode. Um, we believe that we look at what we've got and we try to get our best players in their best spots. Um, and, and even if you move a guy um, from one position to another, he's still going to have a bias to sort of play you know, to, to his strengths. Um, and um, I think that's probably more what you're seeing than any specific structural change. You're backed in to Corning and Blitzarves to rock against two recognised ruckmen again. How do you see that play out for you? Yeah, we, we as I think I've said before, um, we are really, really optimistic uh, about Sam De Conning and um, but we, we could leave him as a defender and um, I'm sure he'd do that um, role brilliantly for us. Um, but a bit like some of our other really good players over the last couple of months, it just hasn't been clicking for him. Um, and we just made no apologies for prioritising um, not only our best players, but our best young players as well. And so we thought we needed to get him into the game a little bit more. Um, but look, I don't mind saying, like if it didn't work with Sam um, this week, we'd do it again next week. Were you surprised they went in with the two genuine Ruckman given the conditions? 
no. No, I, my, my guess is they wanted to play the two ruckmen for a long time. It's just Draper was injured and Goldstein was managed. Um, sometimes when it's slippery like that, there are more stoppages. Um, there tend to be less stoppages now with the way the game's been umpiring and the, the rule change that happened midway through the year. Um, no, I, did, I didn't think about it too much, to be honest. Mitch Duncan subbed off. Looks like he was getting a bit of treatment after he left the field. How is he? Yeah, just cramp. So um, we waited for three or four minutes after he came off, but it seemed to us that the game was in hand, so we managed him, but it seems to be clear. We we concerned at all by the clearance count um, being going against you because it didn't feel like it had a major bearing on the game. Well, I was always concerned by the numbers, but... Um, As much as possible, we, we, we try to think a little bit more sort of second and third order effects rather than the, 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 the raw numbers. And, and clearances are a good example of that. Right? For example, if the ball's in your forward half a bit, the opposition are going to outnumber your clearances. And then you can lose the clearances, but the ball stays in your forward half. Like scores are much more important from stoppages. Inside 50s are much more important. It's hard to overlay the objective. Um, um, analysis of the quality necessarily, but I, I just think, um, as I said, our, some of our midfield stuff has been um, letting us down, uh, and what we weren't going to do was jump at shadows when their good players were, were getting some clearances. We certainly weren't going to move Stewart um, you know, or Dangerfield uh, out of there. So, yeah, m minor concern, but, um, yeah, again, I was going to hesitate to say it because I'm not saying, our oh, stats don't matter. Of course they do. Um, but you know, sometimes you can overreact to that stuff, change things, and it makes it worse. What do you think changed um, from the second quarter to, say, the first 15 or so minutes of the third quarter when you really put the gap in the game? Well, I thought we were a bit better around the ball, um, and we, um, we looked a bit more dynamic ahead of the ball too, like, especially um, in the conditions. I thought both teams actually marked it OK. It wasn't as if you couldn't um, take overhead marks, but it was... Um, I thought our ability just to put them under a little bit more pressure deeper in our forward line sort of had an impact. Not, not just in the way we scored, but field position was always going to be important with the slippery ball. How pleased were you about Lawson Humphrey's debut? He looked really composed across half back. Yeah, it was, I'm, I'm pleased that he was able to get the ball enough to show um, what he can do with the ball. His decision making and his kicking, um, but even the contest he was good. But, Again, it's hard to get these things right, but it does feel like we've been talking about him for a couple of months. Um, and I guess you're always hopeful that you look back and think, should have pulled the trigger on that a little bit earlier, but that's... At least we got him in there tonight, and I thought he and Mitch Nebbett um, were impactful. And um, Ollie Henry, is there a chance to face Hawthorne next week? Oh, yeah, I'm almost certain Ollie will play. He's pretty, pretty conservative, not playing him this week. I don't think you're really asking this though, but Tom Hawkins, do you have any fears for him at six to eight weeks? Fears? Yeah, just for, no. the, for his season and No, nah, they're they're saying six to eight. Um, Tom's been at the club every day, he's already started his rehab. Um, it seems to me to be pretty positive and it's hard it's hard to get these things perfect. You'd never wish injury on on players. Um, you know, Dangerfield's a good example. Um, you know, even a couple of years ago, we had a few in the first half of the year. The silver lining is sometimes you can get guys in really good shape um, for a small part of the season. But my observation is it's really, really hard to be up for 26, 27 weeks. Um, the way that the season's structured and, and the evenness of it all. So um, if you're good enough to qualify in a decent enough position, getting some fresh players back towards the end of the year um, can be a real positive and, and as I said I, yeah it's, it sounds like a long time out six to eight but um, I reckon that six to eight gets him back with at least sort of a few weeks before the finals if we're good enough and everyone's confident that that he'll be at least in good shape